Hello and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekend Show. I'm Mal Lee, your host for this evening. I hope everyone has had a fantastic weekend up to now. Hope Friday, you know, well the kids are off now, or most of the kids are off. I don't think there's any more break up. They're off for one, two weeks, maybe. So, here's to all those kids who are enjoying themselves, and especially at the football today. It was a little bit cold at the North Liverpool JFL, but it was great, it was run right. Um, and, yeah, loads of respect. That's what we want on and off the field of play. People talking, people warming their hands because, as I say, it was cold and the kids loving the football. That That is grassroots football. Be all and end all. People are just loving it, lapping it up and enjoying themselves. And why shouldn't they be? Well, tomorrow, obviously, I won't be out and about, so we recorded the show. Um, I'm in work, it's my Sunday. And so what can I do? And I think I'm going to miss the Liverpool game as well. Oh, no, we can't do that. Can't do that. I love to watch it on the uh, unless we got it on Sky. I don't think it is. It's a two o'clock kick off, and it's a game that probably Sky wouldn't follow anyway. Got the Manchester derby that goes on at three thirty. All the times have changed. I don't know what it is. Who's running football now? I think it's the uh, Sky Sports because they're dictating what time the kick offs are just for the TV coverage, paying millions of pounds. So money does talk at football, doesn't it? Would we do that? Imagine having a little match of the day there at um, in grassroots football. I think it'd be absolutely fantastic. Food for thought. Let me think about that one and come back to you. Anyway, we had a great game today. I must admit, it was a uh, wonderful. Kids were all up for it. Two teams were up for it actually. We played um, Club DXL Lions played Lydia Leopards. And is it me? Is it me who's getting all these pitch markings? Not pitch markings. Numbers wrong. Last week. We played on 1B. This week we were down on 1B. And we get told, no, that's 1C over there. That's, you're there. I don't know. I really, really don't know. Are we getting changed? I checked my pitch. I was 100% we were on 1B. But unfortunately, no. But, hey, all the goals were up. And we put the goals up for the the, the two teams. And they're, they're all made up. They're all made up that the goals are going up. Anyway, we got on with the game. And it was great from start to finish. It was lovely. Two teams having a little go. Two teams on the same level. It's always nice to be on the same level. Um, and the game could have gone either way. It really could. And we just held on. We're not even going to give the score. Why should we? Um, but it was really, really close. Let's put it this way. Uh, it could have gone either way. And well done to Lydia Leopards, the managers, the coaches, everyone running on, helping each other, the kids, having a nice time. That's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. And shaking hands at the end makes a difference but before that we had a minute applause for um, Bill Kenwright sadly who died midweek and also Sir Bobby Charlton uh, two two greats I suppose you know um, some Evertonians didn't get on with Bill but that's life isn't it we all have that some don't get on with you others do and you know we all go through the same situation but um, yeah well done to the kids kids who probably didn't understand but they were stood there clapping away a minute silence is no good because they're only six years of age but well done to the league for holding that a um, minute's applause it went down very very well and i was fittingly in blue so there you go um, there's a little gesture to everton fans and also to bill kenwright and i'm sure he'd be sadly missed at everton football club so well done once again to all the teams who participated all the referees who got it right and the kids who were clapping it was really really good and the parents but well, I thank the parents because every one of the parents were all clapping on the sidelines as well. So well done to all. Um, yeah, it was recognised and it was a nice part of the weekend to be witness to it and stand on the pitch with the kids as well. Anyway, what a great day it was. But as I say, what a great game. Well done to the kids. All battled well. And they actually listened to me. Every week I've been saying to you, you know, six-year-olds, they just want to play. You put a slide there and then a swing on the other side of yet yeah, those kids would be on that and we'd be talking to ourselves i'll tell you that now and um, it's it's a fact isn't it the kids just want to play regardless if they see something they want to go on it and hats off hats off to the kids they were absolutely brilliant especially our defender already there who mopped up everything at the back he's getting better and better but as i say we've you know harry well done man of the match harry and well done to all the kids, you could have given it to man and match to every one of them. But it was nice to know the listening and they're starting to get a really good feel of the game. They're understanding what it is to be in a team. And even our goalie, Cody, who models himself on Jordan Pickford. Well, there you go. You know, this is what the kids are, you know. He was just saying, 
But he did play better than Pickford today. I did say that, and I knew he was uh, going to be over the moon on it. But he just said he had his lucky charm, and his brother came to watch him today, and he played well. Isn't that great when kids talk? I've got a lucky charm with me, me brother. I uh, loves it. But all you yeah, well done kids listening to me for a change and we got everything right there. All you had the full game and the kids what we do is we have eight players and we make or give one player a chance. If you've got eight, the full eight, once one player a chance to play the whole game, which is great, they're all loving it. Parents are loving it, the kids are loving it. And um obviously when the seven we go down to seven and it's different, we have two subs and we we just it's brilliant, it really does work and we have to time it right so everyone gets the exact amount of time. And I think that is the way to be. Fair time, fair play, great play and a win under our belt. So um, we've got a couple of wins now and it is nice because we took these kids right away, put them in on the pitch and they're just developing, they're just learning now. They're trying to run with the ball now and there's no harm in that. Um, and they're starting to look up to, to pass to each other and there's no harm in that either it's it's what we want when you're running with the ball always someone come to help out and that's what we tell the kids but so long as they're enjoying it and I could tell by the group it's it's booming uh, the parents are happy with it as well it's always nice to get a little win you know it's not all about winning but it's nice for the kids but do you know what the kids have been losing a lot and they don't feel any difference and you can see it when they win yeah, they're excited, but they all shook hands, and that is the main thing. Well done, once again, to Lydia Leppert and the team managers. They did brilliant. Well done to you all. Okay, uh, we also publicised our um, our night. I'll just come back to you on that one now because I'm thirsty of talking. Which is on the 23rd of November. Now you've heard about that. The heart, <coughs> excuse me, hearts of gold initiatives that it's. Uh, uh, sister company to uh, Don't Cross the Line. We came up with this because we want to develop uh, our Heart of Gold initiatives and we want to do activities and we've got a team there who will do activities, easy ones, hard ones, we're building them up and we're raising awareness towards mental health in kids and obviously the place to be is at Uni Football, millions and millions of kids taking part, it's not just the adults, it's a lot of kids as well and we know for a fact that there's many kids out there suffering with mental health so we want to try and make everyone aware of it and we want to try and raise funds and we want to try and team up with a couple of organisations and see what we can do to support the children and also there's disadvantaged children out there as well and don't cross the line is there for everyone you know we're in the community for the community and we want to make a difference to each and every one of those kids and like today it was great to see two teams on the same level playing each other, enjoying each other. And we've got a tournament there in, at the Edwin Adam, Carroll, it's Little Players. That's on Friday coming, um, 12 o'clock. We've got to be there for, so I'll get all the postcode, get all the details and put it into the group so everyone's aware of it. And we all look forward to them. Well, the kids enjoying themselves. So we've got training on Wednesday, training, or a tournament on Friday, and we've got a game on the Saturday. So the kids should have plenty of football to be improving with and learning and developing. It gives them all a great opportunity to um, be outstanding, basically, and start improving the, the skill levels, which they are doing, believe me. They really are, and it's, it, it, it's made me prouder that we were lucky enough last year to get kids who developed and gelled together unbelievably. This is what you can do. One or two of them have played there before, and our under eights are brilliant. They'll go on and they'll win games. Now, we want to wanted to try and do something and bring in an under sevens to develop them as well. They all wear the ref spec kits as well towards our referees. We go in to detail about why we're supporting that as well. Um, and we just got these kids off the park who really never played, brought them all together and sh trying to show the world that we can also develop kids from nothing, from experience, to make them little players, little football players enjoying their football. They've got to listen, they've got to develop, and they've got to listen and focus on their game and the responsibilities. And it's good for their attitudes as well, because the parents are praising us the way we talk to the kids. We can control them. We have a couple of children there with autism, um, and it's working great with us. They respect us. They will argue back with you, but at the end of the day, they are there, and they focus on you, and they listen. And it takes a little bit longer to get through to them, 
but they're enjoying themselves and be all and end all we love it and there's plenty of kids out there with autism and ADHD playing in football that we have to respect and understand what these kids are going through so we want to give them all a chance and that's the best way to be and it is enjoyable it is funny the comments they come out with I couldn't repeat on some of them on these you know but it was absolutely brilliant it really was you know coming up and telling you how they've been and they've been vomiting and things like this I, I love it um, but they wear the ref spec kits and that's all about that we give the um, the referees the respect that they deserve as well and the young referee today Liam great absolutely brilliant today he was really on top of his game and he said that's the best five side game he's ever refereed it was great and it was end to end and we enjoyed it and that's a lovely comment not just for the club itself but for the team uh, the both teams and the managers and the coaching staff and you parents as well that is a lovely comment that it really is um, and it's very welcome so the referees are giving something back there aren't they and the kids are respecting the referee that is a be all and end all of grassroots football we need to drum that into them as well which i do and we have a little coin the respect coin you might see that we give that to the referee to toss up but i was um, a little bit late on that one today because you're organizing your team getting eight players and making sure that they get equal game time and make sure but they were well behaved on the touch lines as well because kids just want to make run around and but they didn't they listened well done um, and i hope you had the same whatever you were uh, I've just gone on to one there because we're telling you all about meeting up and supporting or promoting the Heart of Gold initiatives all about mental health, uh, not just in kids football but you know in the walks of life and in our communities and we want to do something about it and that's why we came up with the Heart of Gold initiatives and we have a GoFundMe page as well, you're quite welcome to donate on that GoFundMe page and um, if you just say it, I haven't got the link, I keep saying I'm going to get the link for you but it's if you just say it's DXTL Heart of gold initiatives you'll come up you'll see us that we've done our last challenge was the, the yorkshire 12 hour three peaks challenge and it killed us it was really really hard to do but we got through we achieved it and one team one makes it all the team make it it's just like um what is it it's um ah, well forget what i'm talking about but it, it is um sticking together being part of a team and that's what we the adults are and what we're doing is trying to raise funds and as, as we say awareness for it we've got a special night on the 23rd of November you may have seen it we've got that John May comedian who's going to do presenting of the awards for us thank you very much with John known him for many many years and also we've got um, Holly Ellison and she was the holds the record for the fastest turnaround on the voice from Will I Am and I think it was just less than two seconds um, she got beat in the final, just picked on that one, but she's brilliant, she's got a lot of following. And we've also, also got Lauren Clark, who's also a female vocalist. <coughs> and we've got Kev, the T DJ, the DJ, the party professional DJ. So it's really boiling up to be a special night. And we should put on a special night because the team that we've built up together, all of us, uh, have all come together, they've shared stories, they've swapped stories and what they've been through has been tough and they've taken the time out to make the heart of gold the awareness for the heart of gold they've made it really really good indeed and you can only respect them you can only not uh, the, the the managers the coaches they're, they're involved in kids football they do it week in week out the volunteers and they've taken time off work as well what an evening what an evening we have in prospect and you can get your tickets from hotel anfield it's 7 o'clock till 11, and that's where the venue is. It's on Anfield Road, by the way, Liverpool, but if you're out of town, if you're travelling through Liverpool, give us a shout if you're staying over. Uh, tickets are available there, £10 each, and you can take a table of eight. We won't want to fill this up, and businesses are taking the table, so we're well and truly in there. We just need support for the people who are giving the support back for the Heart of Gold initiatives. It makes a change getting involved with the communities and we also want to try and give out awards for the community as we go along in the future because we know ourselves there's a lot of unsung heroes out there whether it be football whether it be modest dancing you know i've got uh, kids there who just come up to the studio today having a laugh with the young girls there we're all in dance passion i mentioned this yesterday on the um oh yeah i did mention it i think i did anyway because we had our young commentators who were great by the way, Ben and Oliver, 
we were debating about the derby and this 12 point deduction that may happen uh, for Everton Football Club and Manchester City is supposed to be in trouble and the Premier League have called for a 12 point deduction what would that do to our neighbours I'm a red um, I think it's disappointing um, but I can't see them getting deducted 12 points uh, they need to up the game and you heard me forecast the scores so um, hey what more could we ask for you put all the scores out let's see if they come to got right spot on and I've gone for exactly the same for Liverpool again tomorrow Nottingham Forest 2-0 Mo Salah why not there you go carry on where you're um, on a winning streak anyway we've talked about the hearts of gold we talk about getting involved with us please if you want to get involved marathontextline.com if you wanted a ticket we can arrange to see you I'm at Jeffrey Humble every week there I um, won't be there tomorrow but I was there today um, but message me marathontextline.com add me as a friend on Facebook Twitter LinkedIn all the social network sites if you want your tickets get on board honestly it's going to be an evening to remember and for £10 a ticket you know you can go out and spend £10 on a pizza it's gone where's your enjoyment there you just bloated and you say why did I bother getting that I didn't feel like it look at me now it's killing me putting the weight on whereas you can go out have a sing along good old sing along and talk about meeting friends and it goes on for years that you know it makes a difference when you have a really really good night doesn't it beats any pizza I'll, I'll give you that and um, yes so uh, whenever you're going out and about and especially tomorrow as well please show loads of respect on and off the field of play we need you to respect our referees many of them are still at school as well and you see the yellow armband that means that the child is under 18 and we also know that every child on that pitch if that child is under 18 refereeing the game then you can bet your bottom dollar that every child without their armband is under 18 and still at school as well so we don't want tirade parents or spectators on and off the field of play. No sideline referees telling the referee what to do. If you need to be a sideline referee, before you think, before you shout, think, and then look on the LCFA website or your local county FA website, and you can take your safeguarding course and also your DBS and start doing your level one course or your referee course and get involved in grassroots football. And I know for a fact that people, and we've got one of ours as well, one of the parents who was sometimes a little bit shouty to tell me what to do and what have you, towards the manager. And he took up the challenge, not for the referee challenge, but to be part of the coaching team. DBS, coaching, safeguarding, change person, helping to run the team, change person, understands and respects now. So it's brought out the best in that, that person. So we recommend it, any parents want to, Get involved, even our parents want to get involved in it, and we know one or two do. Get in touch with the local county FA. I wish it was discounted. You know what I'm like, more, more, more play, less pay. And I want to do that campaign because I'm fighting to keep costs down in grassroots football because we just talked about disadvantaged children there and families. Some kids out there we know cannot afford to play in grassroots football or any sport and activities, so we need to get on board with that one as well. And I heard on the local radio today for the local people in the city, in, in the um, Netherton area, where the, the, the distraught, they can't afford their heating bills. And that's come out, that's come to light today. And they're, they're appealing to the government um, organisers to try and help these people because they're still behind <coughs> in debt on their heating bills. And that's not just on Merseyside, that's all over the country. And we need to get a grip, we really do. You know, people need to survive. It shouldn't have to be... If you're not working, you can't afford a bill, you can't put food out for the kids on the table, you're cutting down yourself, you're trying to make ends meet. We need to get a grip and uh, let's all sing off the same song sheet. We're all human, we're all a team, we're all together. Let's all be as one and the government needs to recognise that and make this country, the country that it is, it's one of the richest companies, countries in the, in, in the world, so why can't our people prosper? Anyway, that's my little moan about that one, but you can understand where don't cross the line yourself and everyone comes from in here. We're voluntary, we're a CIC, community interest company. We want to make the best, bring the best out of people within our city, within our communities, within our football teams. We just want to make sure that everyone's happy and everyone's chatty and everyone's got a smile on their face and things are going well because we have got Christmas coming up very, very soon indeed. <coughs> Okay, we come to the end of our show. 
Thank you very, very much indeed for tuning in to us all week and listening to what we've got and what we've got to say. If you want to get tickets, please, for our night on the 23rd of November, please don't hesitate, get in touch. Even if you buy a ticket and donate the ticket to someone else, that'd be great, £10. It all goes to a good cause. We'll see you uh, tomorrow, with our last show for the weekend, and obviously you've got Halloween parties all over. Please enjoy, be safe, don't be silly with anything, no busy nights, and enjoy your parties and enjoy Halloween. From yourself, Marlene, all the team here at the Grassroots Show, don't cross the line, respect programme, no ref, no game, and our hearts of gold. Have a great evening. Good night, God bless. <laughs>